Google partners who are making sure all of this happens today. Let me give a shout out with lots of love to, to the Texarkana Chamber of Commerce, the Texas Tech University, Northwest Texas State, SBDC, so, so that's the Small Business Development Center Network, IT Experience, I saw you here, Silver, the Stephenville Chamber of Commerce, the Denton Public Library, the North Branch, also the Bay City Public Library, we gave a shout out to Samantha earlier, and the Jamestown Regional Entrepreneur Center. I see several people here here from North Dakota, so welcome. Welcome to everybody here and many thanks to our Google partners. Now this is who I am. I've been with Google for a little under five years. I'm super excited to be here with you today and I'm very thrilled to talk to you about how you can use YouTube to grow your business. I come from a small business background. I've had the great opportunity also to work with a lot of vets or military families in being able to help them either start businesses, transition out of civilian life or transition into civilian life out of military life and I'm thrilled to be able to just see small businesses grow. Small businesses do fuel my fire and I have the great opportunity especially when I get to travel for with Google which I did quite a bit before 2020 and I'm looking forward to do that again very very soon. Um, I have the great opportunity to travel with my son who also does photography. So you see him actually pictured here as he came with all to, to all the Google events. He's my Google partner all the way. So welcome to everybody. Glad you found that question box. Again, if you commented in the question box, you will get a copy of today's recording, okay? So you can slow me down, speed me up as you need me to. And then in a little while, I'll tell you how you can get a copy of today's slides. Now do know, at the end, I, I keep it interactive because I do like to make sure you're getting the most from this. So do let me know what you need and your questions in the question box, but also know that with a longer Q&A, so I'll answer questions in between, but if there's something longer, more specific, I save that to the end and I do turn off the recording then. So I do not record you during that longer Q&A. That's specifically for people who are actually here live. All right, deal everybody? Let's talk about how you can use YouTube to grow your business. You see that right in front of you. You also see that you can use the hashtag grow with Google. If you are tweeting or posting, feel free to use this hashtag because it lets all of your friends know that you're leveling up your skills, but it also lets the Google team know that this matters to you. And the reason that's important is because it encourages them to create more. Now, if you'd like to, this is me on Twitter, that's my Twitter handle down here, or me on Instagram. Feel free to tag me and I'll share you in my stories, retweet you, share you in a reel, whatever I need to do to make sure you get visibility. So feel free to do that, okay? I love that you're doing that for me. Let's go ahead and dive in. Thank you, thank you, Kathleen's here. We've got Nicole, all right. Glad everybody is finding the question box. Let's dive in. Now we know people go to YouTube. How many have been on YouTube even today? And for what reason do you go on YouTube? I often go when I have something to do. For example, I um, was looking, so, so if you see the frames behind me, I'm dealing with glare back there. So I'm trying to reduce that glare. So I went onto YouTube to find out how to do that. I also tried some new software. So I went into YouTube to find out, figure out how to do that. It's where I go when I wanna learn something pretty quickly. If you've ever seen the movie, The Matrix and how they just plug in and learn, wow, all of a sudden I know jujitsu, that's the way I feel like when I'm utilizing YouTube. Anybody else? How do you use this? Absolutely, let me see. For learn pitching. Some people have learned it for pit, learn to how to pitch, perfect. Yes, Elizabeth, there is gonna be a copy of the recording and you get a copy of today's slides too, but I'll let you know when you can, um, what you need to say to get a copy of those in just a moment, all right? around for home projects, perfect, okay. Anybody else wanna share how you use YouTube? It is where we go when we wanna know, go, do, or buy. We look at a product, we look at unboxings. In fact, know that four out of five videos that are watched on YouTube are unboxing videos because people are buying online and they wanna know what they're receiving. They wanna have an idea. So if you're not familiar with an unboxing video, what that is, it's a video showing it coming out of the packaging, the bubble wrap, exactly what you're going to get, taking it out of the styrofoam, putting it together. It may, so there may be some assembly there, but it truly is showing you what you get for what you've paid for. And a lot of people go to YouTube to watch that. Let me see, we have also got makeup tutorials. Um, Oh, perfect. So you started a YouTube also. I look forward to seeing that link. Just drop that in there. I won't be able to look at it now, but I'll look at it after, definitely after the webinar. Let's see. Um, we've got content creation. Oh, especially, let's see, craft, relaxation, podcast. I do that too. Training videos, software. 
And a lot of times it's my entertainment. There are a lot of comedians and a lot of web shows that I actually watch because they're on YouTube. And that's the only place. In fact, I have the great opportunity to work with my sons. As I said, we're a small business and I've been in small business for 18 years. And I work with my sons who actually work with web series creators. Um, They're heavily involved in Twitch and Discord and, and everything involved with putting a series or a production together. So, well, thank you. Thank you so much for dropping that in the question box. All right, so let's talk about what we do on YouTube and how you can maximize it. And the reason it's important to you is because only 9%, let's take that in for just a moment, only 9% of businesses have a YouTube strategy. It's a wild west, everybody. You have a great opportunity to really stake your claim, to get your visibility there, and to be consistent. In fact, I'm surprised every single day as I go through different YouTube channels and I work and I consult with people about here are some of the best keywords to use, how many won't do simple things like using keywords in the um, the tags or using it in the title. So there's really no strategy. I mean, some really, really well-known YouTubers who have been or who uh, do training videos. Uh, you know, there's one who does dog training. And I was really surprised that he doesn't use any of the SEO at all, which means that you have a great opportunity, <clears throat> excuse me, to take that and do something similar to what he's done. And then now also put some keywords in there, some SEO, and that really does help. So we'll talk more about that. Oh, perfect, Rena. Oh, that's perfect. I love that. Close families. Yes, very, very close. So we're going to talk about how you can actually create your YouTube channel. If you have a channel, let me know in the question box how you can add videos to your channel. So you may have one, but you may not have done it lately. So sometimes you get a little bit rusty on how to do that, how to promote your business with video ads. I'll spend just a little bit of time on that because I really want to talk about what you can use for free. What I will talk about in ads is I will talk about how you can um, actually use ads for free I mean for some free ex exposure and also the free keyword planner if we have some time I'll cover that okay just remind me to do that if I do forget and then of course I end everything with a recap and resources of and they're all free okay everything that I like is free or small fee because I'm definitely a bootstrap marketer so how you can create your YouTube channel let's talk about what all it takes so as we get started First, you need to sign in. That's most important. So you'll go to youtube.com and you'll sign in. Now, if you have a Google account, let me throw this up here. If you have a Google account, I'll give you a good visual because um, I like to give practical visuals. Let me make that bigger too because I am broadcasting. So if you're in your Google account, which I'm signed into my Google account, a Gmail is a Google account, so you're golden, or you could have a free Google account. But if you look at the app keypad up here, we trainers call it the app waffle you will see that you also have the ability to go to YouTube right here. So if you're already signed into your Google account, you can go right here, right? That makes it an easy find, easy, quick to get to. But if you're creating a Google account for the first time, you'll go to youtube.com, you'll go ahead and sign in, or if you've not signed into your Google account for the day. I'll take you here, there we go. Now you have the opportunity to click right here on the right-hand side to create a channel. And you'll see that opportunity shows up here and it'll also appear here. All of the Google tools usually give you several opportunities to click through to get to something. Now you can create a channel if you've not created a channel yet. And then customize that channel. So this is what it looks like when you customize it. You'll click right here on that link to customize it. What I mean by customizing it is branding your channel. You want it to look and feel like you. Brand trust and brand equity is actually built by consistency and with consistency. There's a reason when we're driving down the road that we see the golden arches, we have an idea of what that is. We all know instantly it's because of branding and it's really important was people are cruising around the the internet you know or they're on socials and they're over there and they see your photo here and your photo here your Facebook profile business profile is the same as your LinkedIn business profile as your tw TikTok account as your Twitter account wherever you're going your discord account your twitch wherever they go and your YouTube channel wherever they spend time they see that consistency and that helps build that 
YouTube channel. Perfect, Nancy, I'm glad you have one. So I'm gonna talk a lot about optimizing the channel too. I just wanna give everybody a chance who does not have a channel to see this. And then of course, because you've commented in the question box, you get a recording of this. So if you wanna zoom past this, go to the optimization stuff, that's great. Remember, I'll do Q&A at the end, but I will answer questions interactively. I like to keep this a conversation, so feel free to use the question box. And then you can also upload videos here. So you have the opportunity to upload videos to your channel. So get really, really familiar with this back dashboard or the back office of YouTube. And now customizing your channel, there's a lot that you can do. So you can walk through in YouTube Studio, that's the next step. So as you're clicking on that right-hand side, let me bring you back there. When you're clicking here on the right side, you will see the ability to go to the YouTube channel, YouTube Studio. You'll also see it here in the left-hand margin where the navigation is happening. Just click on that and now you have the opportunity to customize your channel however you see fit and to brand it. So you can choose the layout. This is really important because a lot of people just use the default layout of YouTube and that is just showcasing what you uploaded last. That's not the best use of your channel. It's not the best presentation for somebody who wants to go view your information. It also makes it difficult for the search engine to search you and find you. So there are certain things that you can do to help tweak that SEO, that search engine optimization, and make you more visible in Google search and also in YouTube search. So Google's the number one search engine in the world, but the number two search engine in the world is YouTube. YouTube is the number two search engine in the world. It is also the number two social network in the world. So YouTube is very unique over Instagram Reels, TikTok, and any other video platform because it operates as a search engine and also a social network. So instead of your reel being available for the next three weeks or your story just being around for the next 24 hours, but really just pushed in visibility for the next about five or six hours, what you'll find out is in YouTube, it's evergreen, right? It stays there forever and it can be searched and those search results show up in Google search. Now, where does 99% of the world go when they want to know, go do or buy? They go to Google. So it's very important for you to show up. In fact, it's really critical for your business to show up in the first search of an organic search page of Google. So every Google search page brings back 10 search results, 10 organic search results. You need to show up in the first page for people to even know that your business exists. And YouTube can help you get there. But one of the things that you need to do is look at your layout. Are you using the video spotlight? So the video spotlight in your YouTube channel gives you first a trailer video. So what a trailer video is, is for it's shown to everybody who's not subscribed to your channel. And you want to give this because it is just like it sounds. It's like a movie trailer. It's a preview. This is what you're going to get. This is what I'm going to cover. This is what you'll learn. This is how it benefits you. Imagine that everybody viewing your channel has W-I-I-F-M tattooed on their head. And that stands for what's in it for me. You as the professional in your business have to connect those dots for them and be able to explain why you they need to subscribe to your channel and why your channel is helping <clears throat> benefit them now after they subscribe there is a video spotlight that will show up after that so you can highlight two videos one is a actual trailer video and then one is a featured spotlight and when you do a featured spotlight so you see that right here channel trailer and then featured video the featured video needs to thank them for subscribing and then encourage them to you know give them a little tidbit let them know what's going to happen next give them a timing of schedule when they could expect new videos it helps them start building trust and rapport with you rapport needs to be done first and the more that you're on camera the more that they see your information even if it's not you on camera but you're going over or something they have more trust and more brand consistency that is building that know like and trust that people will step over dollars to do business with someone who they know like and trust Get that? All right. So as you see here, perfect. Okay, Rena, wonderful. I'm glad you're gonna update those. So customize those and then understand here you have featured sections. This is very underutilized, but it's so key to search engine optimization and showing up in YouTube search and Google search. And that is to use these sections. Now these sections you'll know as playlists, right? Whenever you're in your YouTube channel, you see this thing called playlists. When you're looking at playlists, you can organize, let's say, um, you know, Samantha, you said you're with the library. So maybe it is um, about some of the, the library classes. So it's how to check the schedule of the library, how to um, become involved with the library and really use it as your learning resource. So let's say you're focused totally on somebody who's wanting to learn a new skill set and you do a whole playlist, Samantha, of 
you know this is this is what you'll find when you walk into the library the first thing you need to do is become is to do this share your information or, or be able to secure that you can check out whatever you need to at the library you need to look at our multimedia room you need to look at this this is where you'll find this maybe they've never searched for anything in the library so you're going to teach them through that and that could be a whole playlist of how to utilize the Bay City Public Library as your resource to learn about starting a business or to learn accounting. And you make a whole playlist of that. You have videos in there, each covering each section of that. Remember, we don't want our videos long, but we want them short because people's attention spans are short, but we want it long enough to get the information there. But do it in bite-sized pieces. So that's why it's consumable. And now you have a whole playlist. You name that playlist and you make it searchable. Make sense to everybody? Okay, for story times, perfect. You have playlists for story times, how to videos, programs. Samantha, that's awesome. You're already doing best practices. So you can have several playlists here. They look like bookshelves under your featured and your spot or your channel trailer. So they look like that, really giving a nice, good visual look to your YouTube channel. All right. Now you can also brand. Remember what I said, next up with branding, you'll see here you can brand and you could put a banner image there as well as your logo. Think about what you're already, you already have across digital spaces and do be sure that you are matching that. Again, that brand consistency that we're looking for. So you have both of the opportunities to control what's there. What's also nice is you have the opportunity to put in certain things like your website, certain links. Let me give you an expert tip. So you can put your website link there. If people are looking at your YouTube channel, they can click on that link and go directly to your website. And the text before it just says your website. That's all it says. So it's kind of useless because we all know if it's up there and it's a, a link, more than likely it's going to take you to their website. So use one of your keywords. For example, if it's... Um, Story, story time, learn more about story time or story time fun is what you could put Samantha up there instead of my website or website dot dot. It's gonna say story time fun dot dot and it's gonna be a link there, right? And then they'll just click on there and be able to get there. So you're getting a little bit of keyword SEO juice, which is what the search engine uses to find information online and to help somebody who's searching right there in that little area. Now in basic info, when we finally look at basic info, now we're looking at your description and your channel links here. So that is what I was just talking about, putting your website, all of your socials there, because we want to meet people where they're at. Um, I don't want to guess where somebody's spending time. I like to look at the data to see where my best customer or my best prospective customer could be. And I will look at that and I might make sure I'm on that social or I might give them every opportunity to say that I'm on the, all these different socials and then they can join me here too. But I'm very much a focused person and believe that we have not enough time in a day right time is more valuable than money and it's very important for you to strategically target you'll see back here if you're not measuring you're not marketing I believe in that in socials too everything you need to do is measuring your marketing if you're not doing that then one dollar one minute spent that's not lifting the bottom line or getting you closer to your goal is one dollar one minute spent too much so you can customize all this here but let me give you an expert tip right here for those of you who have channels and for those of you who did don't this might be a little bit of overwhelm not to worry just skip past this when you do get a copy of the video and by the way if you want a copy of the slides just let me know in the question box that you want a copy of today's slides and I'll make sure you get a copy of those just so, so just put S for slides. I'll know that that's what you want the copy of today's slides a lot of people like to use that as an outline and follow along but what you're going to do in the description is you can put what's known as timestamps. So one of the SEO tricks in YouTube is to put chapters into your YouTube channel. Now, how do you put chapters in there, right? I've been talking about bookshelf, you know, Samantha, the library analogy is really lining nice here, but you're going to put chapters and chapters are actually timestamps. So what I will do here is I will normally put a minimum of three timestamps. So I will start with zero colon so that's the two dots on top zero zero and i will put the actual name and the title that i titled this video so that's when we go to video now in the grow this is your actual uh, description so you're not going to do that in the description in the description sorry i got a little ahead of myself well I'll, I'll save that in a moment okay I'll, I'll do that when i talk about actual youtube descriptions of videos here i'm talking about description of the channel getting a little ahead of myself here uh, in the description of the channel make sure you're using the words that people use if you're not sure what people use then i encourage you to look and see um, exactly what your keywords are you can use your keyword planner in google ads for that you can utilize that for free you can also go here 
and let's just say I'm going to look at Bay City Public Library. All right, Samantha, uh, let me start here. Bay City Public Library. All right, so you can see Public Library Hours, Public Library Facebook. So those are some of the things that people are actively searching for. What Google does in Google search, it populates with what the active searches are, the most popular searches right now. So even if you are not using Google Trends or a keyword planner for this, you can do this just in a regular Google search. But when I hit enter, then I'm gonna go down here, wonderful. I see right away, Samantha, you've got a Google Business Profile. You'll see here, these are also keywords right here. The first page of an organic Google search go all the way down to suggested searches. That means those are active, popular searches right now. This gives you a little bit of a sneak peek into what effective keywords would work for you, okay? So you can go right here and do this. Helpful? Populate the description with keywords that are readable. User experience is most important, so they need to be able to read it. It can't just be a bunch of keywords you stuffed in there, but make sure it explains exactly what they're going to get and what you do and how you benefit people when they're searching. These words, this text is going to be really key and important to them finding your channel. Now, in customizing the channel, remember what I said about banner image and the profile image? You'll find that this guy, DIY Creators, he has the same image across all of the channels. And then he does do a video spotlight. Remember what I said first? The trailer is if they don't subscribe. And then, of course, the video spotlight is after they subscribe. So they get to see a little bit more. But the trailer is to draw them in, just like a movie trailer. Now, your videos are grouped in sections. Remember what I said a moment ago? So for example, when I was playing with Samantha's example and saying how to use the library as a resource to start a business, because I'm thinking about how people are searching for this. So what should I make this playlist? And then I could put different items under here, right? Different videos that I've created or even bring in and share somebody else's video in here, but make it very pertinent to somebody when they feel they come, they feel like they're getting all of the benefit and the knowledge that I have to share with them about what specific topic they have. Perfect, Sherry, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for saying so. I appreciate everybody's feedback here and lit. thank you for letting me know that you need the slides and a copy of this, so you'll definitely get that. So let's talk about creating and adding videos. And that's where I'm gonna go into that best practice of that chapter. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. But first, you have some decisions to make before you do that. All right, well, let's talk about these key decisions. How are you gonna produce it? Do you need a highly produced video? Who's gonna create it? Or is it going to be on your phone? I have an entire video studio right here on the phone. And I happen to be in a business where people want immediate, behind the scenes. They want the raw, the authentic. But let's say you're an employer brand and you really need to come across as polished and or maybe more academic. And if that's the case, you might want to go to professional publish, publications or pro professional production. Keep that in mind. What is it that you want to do with your video and what's the goal? Think about what does success look like when this video is used well and when people view it. What do you want them to do after they see your video, right? And what's the story that you want to tell? You know, is it, um, the, what's the purpose? Who's going to be the star of the story? There are many people I see miss the mark because they're launching a new product and they make themselves the story. Now, if you invented the product and you're making that link between and bridging between who you are and how you invent all the way through to the invention, that's one thing. But a lot of times the product is the star. <clears throat> Sometimes it's your customer that's the star. They're giving a testimonial and everybody wants to see that third party validation because we know testimonials and reviews are powerful and they're the actual star as opposed to you. Maybe it's a team member that's the actual star. So really think about what the purpose of your video is and what who's the star of that. And when you do that, now you can start outlining your concepts of your video. And this is really important because while I do a lot of behind the scenes instant, I always have a purpose towards it that is bringing me closer to my goal. Remember, if you're not measuring, you're not marketing. So a lot of people start with a business story, but let me give you one of the favorite stories that I like to use that's the most effective and the storyline is called the hero story. So the hero story outline is this, once upon a time, suddenly, luckily, happily ever after. 
That's all it is. Now you don't say those four prompts, but that's what you use to think about it. So for example, if I was on a video and introducing myself and said, hi, I'm Maria Lena, Maria Lena Duran. I'm an insurance agent and I can help you with your property casualty, insure your home, any of your playthings, your vacations. I'm here for you and your family to support you through any of your needs. <clears throat> My name's Maria Lena Duran, 555-1212. Right, it's just like there. But remember, Facts may tell, but stories, they actually sell. So let's craft that hero story. <clears throat> Sorry about that, frog in my throat. All right. Once upon a time, suddenly, luckily, happily ever after. Hi, I'm Maria Lena, Maria Lena Duran. And when I was eight years old, there was a family that came to our house to thank my father. He was an insurance agent and he had actually taken care of making sure everything was um, actually noted and documented. And it was because of what he did that their, when their home burned down, they felt like they didn't have any of those needs. They could worry just about the other needs that they have. And they really felt taken care of. It was at that moment I knew I wanted to make a difference in people's lives. In that moment when they're so stressed and they don't know what to do next, my name is Maria Lena, Maria Lena Duran. I'm a property and casualty insurance agent, and you can reach me at 555-1212. Okay? Feeling, right? Emotion. We're emotional creatures. When you think about your kiddos and what they ask for at night, what they want to do after they turn off the games and everything, if you offer to read a story, do they want to hear a story? Yes, yes, yes. We as human beings want to hear the story. Oh, okay, absolutely. No worries. No worries. You lost lost um oh you lost power i thought maybe you lost the ability to see what i was broadcasting i was like oh no you know sometimes the internet right so thank you for letting me know that teresa so that's the hero story once upon a time suddenly luckily happily ever after once upon a time i was eight years old and this family came to our house suddenly you know suddenly um you know i heard about their that you know my father made a difference in their lives luckily they had done that and i saw this as an opportunity for me to actually be in there and fulfill that and feel something that is important to me and then happily ever after this is what happened next okay so you can use that hero story for yourself but do know you do need to keep it short right so think about what you can do you can also use the traditional business story which is who you are what you do and why you do you can talk about a product or service story. So this story really talks about the benefits of the product. Remember what I told you about focusing on who the star is, really knowing who that star is, and then also speaking in benefits. It's up to us to make it easier for people to buy from us. And sometimes that means connecting the dots between the features of what we do, our product, service, or solution, and what they're actually getting as far as a benefit. And then of course there's promotional stories where you're actually highlighting something maybe you have an offer maybe you're going to do a webinar and you're out promoting it so it could be something specifically promoting an event a service or your business itself okay again remember to make it really really clear and concise because you only have the first five to 15 seconds to capture somebody's attention and then when you think about that as you create a video not only do you want to know who's the star how you're going to produce it you also want to know the outline of what you're doing so are you focusing on the business story or the product or service story or the promotional story but the next thing is when they see this video how do you want them to feel do you want them to feel excited encouraged motivated or angry, disappointed, scared, or frustrated, or intrigued? What is it the feeling that this video is supposed to get? Because you need to be able to install into that video outline of what you're showing and what you're saying, all of the things that will get people there, that will step them along to that final feeling. So do know what that feeling is that you need to focus on because that's the goal. And then what offer do you want to provide? Because I don't post or do anything that doesn't have some sort of call to action. The call to action could tell could be, tell me, yes or no. Or it could be, look at the blog post here or come here to my site or leave your name here. Or there's a great PDF that has this information on how to do these five things to make your YouTube channel soar. All of these things, I could be leaving them those calls to action, but I always have a call to action. And think about that. Do you have all of that on all your posts? That's not just YouTube, any of the socials I do as well. 
So some of the common production techniques, of course, we know selfie, right? You know, you just do a selfie, you're doing this. There is the backdrop technique. So it could be that you're on against a fake backdrop. You could be using a green screen. So you're gonna bring other things in behind you to put you at a different location. It could also be that you're highlighting a product. A lot of people who are highlighting products will do a backdrop, a white backdrop, and then they'll use a little turntable there and they'll do a six, 360 video. And again, that gives everybody the opportunity like an unboxing does to see a product and get to know it. It could be that you're showing a series of pictures like a collage or video with no um, sound at all and you're doing a voiceover so you're actually speaking over that top down what that looks like is this that what does it look like when you're doing something so for example if I was showing somebody how to do a video or how to do a webinar I might have a camera up here looking top down looking at whole the whole layout over here of what's actually in front of me the two screens the two lights all of that so I could be doing a top down it could be just a simple point and shoot sometimes I do that when I, I a lot of times you'll find me at comic cons and that's all I'm doing is I'm just pointing and shooting all the way around it could be also just an action it could be text overlay we've seen a lot of that in Instagram reels in fact I like to use that in and using the captions in Instagram I'll download that video and then bring those captions over to YouTube shorts and use them a lot of different places because I'm all about rep repurposing it's as much as you create content you should curate content and then also engage. So remember, again, it's social. And then, of course, you could animate it, too. So you could do any of those production features. But you'll see here, there's some really great creative tips here at that bottom left-hand corner URL. So when you're shooting your video, it's important for you to look behind you. Look at the space behind you. That's why that little right there. Um, that little glare is bothering me. You're going to see that change if you come to a future webinar that I do. But it's really important. All of us have been on video calls long enough to see more than we ever wanted to see. We don't want to see the unmade bed or the spouse coming out um, of the, the bathroom with the towel on. Think of lighting too, right? I'm in a corner here um, in my home office. And because of that, I have several lights going here just because you don't want to be that person in the shadows people like seeing faces and we still very much like eye contact it helps build trust but then sound is really the key that's most important we're really forgiving of the space understanding about the lighting but we are not forgiving at all about sound if it's crunchy if the sound is going in and out it's too faint then we want nothing to do with it and we'll go on to the next video what is the best way to position yourself with a window in the room? Oh, with a window in the room. You know, Nicole, it's funny that you say that because I was actually working with a creator yesterday who did a video on this. So if you will make sure, so the, the, the email I sent to you reminding you about this webinar, would you reply to that? And um, I'll send you this short link. She does quick four or five minute videos on the best way to position yourself with a window because I don't ever have to deal with a window, but she is an expert at that. She always, her house is just full of windows. So um, great, great question. Just make sure you message me because I'll forget by the end of the webinar. Okay, so do make sure you message me. So we can look at sound and make sure we have a microphone. In fact, if I'm on the Comic-Con, the San Diego Comic-Con International um, floor, there's 100,000 people around me. I actually have my phone with a mic attached right here. So you can still hear me since I'm surrounded by so many great friends. Also, I don't know if you know, but you do have a royalty-free library within YouTube. So if you want to put any sound in the background, you don't have to worry about copyright um, infringement at all. You have all of this available to you and that's free in your audio library. So just look at your YouTube audio library and you'll find that from navigating that left-hand side. Now, when you're adding videos, you will go up here to create and to upload videos. So when you click to upload videos, then you can select the files to upload those videos. You can create already a template of the title and description. So there's a template that will always show up for every video and it saves you from a lot of typing and writing or making sure you covered everything that you wanted to promote or make sure is associated with this video whenever somebody shares it out. But here's what I was saying here on the title and the description, do be sure to put in chapters. So at least three chapters. This is the description that I was kind of getting ahead of myself earlier. But you're gonna put wanna put three chapters here. So what I normally do is I will put a chapter, the first one is zero, the colon, and then zero, zero. So that's two dots on top of each other, zero dot zero, zero, and I will put the title there because I just want some good juice from the title. Or I might highlight a spe specific part of the title and say demo video YouTube, okay? Then I might put, I might look further in the video and at the two minute mark, so 2.01, I might bring out how to, you know, let's say I'm doing a dog training video, 
how to potty train your dog. Okay, so that's what I bring out there. And maybe the next one at four minutes is how to encourage your dog um, to to um, to utilize a dog litter box, or how to encourage your dog to wait till you come home, or how to handle a dog while you're out of work. Any of the keywords that I think people are using to search for it. Now, how do you find those key keywords? You can use. Let me go here. Remember what I said about Google search? So you can use Google search to be able to do that. Just search in here and see what comes up. How to putty train a puppy. And you'll see all of these that are happening right now. They're in real time. You could also go to YouTube. So let's go here. And I can say how to potty train a puppy. And all of these become available too, right? I can start seeing how to pop putty train your dog quickly. So I might use that keyword because these, again, are highly searched terms right now. It's populating with everything that's highly searched. So how to potty, how to train a potty train a puppy in an apartment. So it could be that that's what I'm doing too. I'm going to use this word and call that out as a chapter, a minimum of three chapters. That'll get you good search engine optimization. You'll show up in YouTube search as well as Google search. And um, if you ever want to come to one of my advanced classes, I'd love to show you how you can actually look and see whether or not your video is ever suggested. If you're showing up in suggested videos too, and really take you in a deeper dive of analytics, I won't be able to do that today just because of time, but I'd love to show that to you if you're interested. Okay, so just talk to your Google partner or let me know. Um, and I look forward to, to being able to take you on a deeper journey into YouTube. Thumbnail is also important. Understand people see thumbnails, so do not, remember it's a thumbnail, small. So do not just pour in the text on there because we can't read it, not that small. So you've got to make sure it's eye-catching, but also within brand, right? So it might be certain colors that you're using. It could be a certain image or person that you're using in there, but do make, make an effort to not put too much text because I see too many people falling into that and that becomes a problem on YouTube. That's something that actually discourages people to look at your video because it looks too cluttered. All right, now remember you can add subtitles if you like. So that's the next screen if you're uploading a video. You can also end an end, add an end screen. I always do this teasing to another video on your channel because YouTube will by default suggest other videos that come up and I want it to right away bring up in your face, pop up like the last two or three seconds before you finish the video, you'll see that, hey, there's another video you can see here on my channel. So I can keep them on the channel further. You can also put cards in that promote certain things, like if you have an offer or a website or something or a product that you wanna showcase, then you can also do that in cards. Now, the next step is checks. So this is when YouTube the, it does it automatically as you're going through here. Every time you hit next, this goes to the next screen here along this timeline. And what happens is it'll check to see if everything is copyright kosher, right? Everything's got to be good. Once everything is within copyright and legally, um, everything that can be online, then, then it will upload it. If there's any problems, you will not get the green check mark here and you will know it, okay? Can you share info on how to access more classes? Oh, yes, Rena, just um, actually reply to the, the video. Um, you First, let's not reply to the video. Hold on, telling too many things. First, reach out to your Google partner because they have a whole schedule of classes, upcoming classes, all right? Feel free to connect with me on social because I always promote them on social too. So you could reply to the email I sent you, but you can also find me on social. But do reach out to your partners because I'm normally in webinars all day long, which means I'm terrible about responding to email. It usually takes me a few days and um, it can easily get buried. So I do want to be sure you get help right away. Reach out to your Google partner, okay? Because that's what they're there for. They're vetted in your success and they really do want to help you. They've got the team to do that. All right, so visibility wise, now you have to decide, how are you gonna use this video? Is it a private video? So now a private video is that, it's private. So if you email it to you know, Maria at google.com, then it's only gonna be seen by Maria at google.com. If I come in with my personal Gmail address, which is Maria GWG or Google Trainer, gmail.com so if i come in with that i'll never be able to open it as private it's only for the person you put the name there so be cautious with that because sometimes it's confusing many people have more than one gmail account or google account now you could put unlisted this is normally what i encourage people to do because I, my mom my mom's 81 years old and she belongs to a lot of different communities online and a lot of different newsletters they'll always send her a video that's private and then she becomes really confused and i usually get a text or a call that she needs text support because she can't access the video and it's because they put it private 
unlisted works really well so you don't have that happen to your customer or to your member you don't have that connection happen because unlisted puts all of this gibberish behind it that it's really tough to find but when you send somebody the link they can access it right away where do i get a google partner oh it's one of the people that invited you here today so a google partner um, is let me see the texarkana chamber of commerce texas tech university northwest texas sbdc network the it experience Stephenville Chamber of Commerce, the Denton Public Library North Branch, Bay City Public Library, and Jamestown Regional Entrepreneur Center. So if you're close to any of those areas, that's a good Google partner to reach out to. If you're not close to any of those areas, then do reply to the email that I sent to you about this event, and I'll connect you with a Google partner close to your area, okay? So this is what you can do with Unlisted. <clears throat> you can also then make sure that it's available to the public which as small businesses, that's what we want to do. Now, as you're going through all of these screens, you will be presented with the question of if your video is just for children. If it is specifically just for children, not parents, just for children, then you'll click that box, but there's a whole slew of requirements that you have to fulfill before your video will ever be published. Most of us in business are focused on the person who can pay right we're working on that person and so it's not just for children and it could be for children but it's really for everybody and if that's the case i would not check that because that's a big slowdown and now you can make it accessible and most of us in business make it public because we're trying to get as much visibility as we can you can also schedule it just like you can with any of your other socials to get on a routine and there are consistency that you're sharing with people who subscribe with your channel and now you can publish it. So it's published once you hit that button and you have all these links to be able to share it quickly in an email, on Twitter, any of the socials that you want to, but it's right here available to you. So you can see that or copy the link right down here. Now shorts are something you probably saw come up about a year ago. And this is, again, you think about TikTok in those quick 15 seconds, that's what shorts are. The big thing with shorts, when you do the description of a short, you're gonna use the hashtag shorts. So it is, does need to be 60 seconds or less, hashtag shorts, and now it'll show up in a new playlist, so a new section under your videos, which will say shorts. And shorts are really good too, good to get some visibility. Now they don't get as much searchability, but I know the algorithm is favoring them a little bit more. So it's good to do some shorts right now to get a little bit more visibility to your channel. It may not be the regular video that you do, but it could be something you're consistently doing too. So there's more about shorts. You can learn more here at that bottom left-hand corner. You can also go here to the Creator Academy. So if you go to this URL, creatoracademy.youtube.com, it'll take you into a deeper dive of what you can do within YouTube to really help, not just with producing, but also making a, a nice schedule, becoming familiar with how to do YouTube Live, and how you can also um, share your video out there and promote your video, okay? Any questions so far? I've covered quite a bit, right? I do want for the small section to go over ads, and really it's to show you how you can utilize ads. So if you're not familiar with Google Ads, one of my favorite tools in Google, and I'll show you two to find keywords, is, let me see, did I bring up the ad planner? I did not, hold on. Um, so if you have Google Ads, okay, let me take you here. I'm actually gonna take you to a canceled Google account because you don't have to put any money in. You don't even have to have a um, credit card associated with it. All right, so you're gonna see everywhere that this is a canceled account, but that doesn't mean I can't use it. All right, so when you see here, what I do is I go up here to this little, so this is Google Ads. Um, again, you don't have to be paying for ads to get to here. Hit the tool settings. You're gonna to go to Keyword Planner, and then now you can go here to Discover New Keywords and you can discover it either by putting your website address here or you can put um, a search term. So let's say our search term's coffee and then we'll get results on that. And it'll show us what the keywords are and how many searches there are about that. Um, what's the cost per click if I wanna do an ad for that, which that's a totally different um, webinar we do about learning the basics of Google Ads. I'm actually doing that this afternoon. Um, but this is so you can take a look at keywords. Remember what I said about keywords in your chapters and keywords in your description and keywords in your title. You want it, be, it, it to be there, but still to be easy, easily read. 
uh, by somebody who's looking for information. Does that make sense to everybody? So you can use this keyword planner. It's 100% free, 100% free, available to you. You can also use Google Trends. Let me go here, g.co slash trends. Google Trends in here, because I'm broadcasting, let me make this bigger. You can look and see who's been talking about coffee in, let me see, in the last four hours in North Dakota. There we go. So Minot and Bismarck and Dickinson have been really talking about coffee today. And they've been talking about caribou coffee, scooters coffee. They've been talking about coffee makers. So if that was um, your business and you focused on coffee, then you might want to take advantage of this because anytime we can use the words that people actually use when they're searching, that means we show up higher in an organic search. It's a better chance for us to show up in the first page and a better chance for them to do business with us. And people cannot do business with us if they do not know that we exist. All right. Um, Oh, absolutely, Adam. Actually, um, yes, if you, I, I can't give you a link here because you can't see it in the question box. Um, but what I can do is, again, reply to that email. I'll try to look at that before I jump on so I can send you a link. Or you can also um, just search me out, find my site, events is where you can find me there under events and that's upcoming trainings and events. Or as I said, reach out to your Google partner because I love working with all the Google partners that we have here and I do several webinars for them. All right, you're very welcome. You're welcome. So how you can promote your business with video ads. So I showed you how you can use Keyword Planner for free, but let's talk about video ads for a moment. And I'm not gonna go to the video here because internet has been wonky today and I don't want everybody to be slowed down, but there's a video about how, uh, really about a YouTube channel that a dog, um, they actually put these, this uh, Thunder shirt together. <coughs> Excuse me. But what I wanna talk to you about before we finish up, because we've got about 10 minutes more time or eight minutes, is YouTube ads. So if you go to youtube.com slash ads, you can learn all you want to know about ads, but let me go into great detail about what you can do with ads. You can do a bumper ad, which is the six seconds on each side. So that's a bite-sized ad, the non-skippable in-stream ad. So that's something that you see when you're watching a video, you'll see it come in stream. You'll also see the outstream ads. So those are the ads actually showing up and um, they're showing up when you're, you're looking at different videos, so they're showing up in your search results. There's the video discovery ads that's on the right side, the suggested videos too, there's ads like that, and of course there's in-stream ads that you can skip, it says skip this ad if you don't wanna see that. But do know, if you use an in-stream ad, so that's a skippable ad, there's a lot you can do. For example, if you just use a bumper ad, the six seconds, now you're gonna pay when somebody watches that, but in six seconds, you can get your message out there, you can get a good visual, even your brand logo out there. It's really a great place to be seen and make an instant impact. You know what they say about a picture worth a thousand words, that's definitely what you get in six seconds. And you'll find that six seconds is really a long time. What I like to encourage people to do, you though, is use the in-stream ad. So this is a skippable in-stream ad, not the non-skippable. You'll see it come up a lot of times when you're watching videos. It says skip this ad in four, three, two seconds, but right at the bottom right-hand corner. And what that does is you can, if you make sure in the first five seconds, five to six seconds, that you put a good message out there, your logo, just like you would with a bumper ad, if you put all of that at the very front five, six seconds, when they skip your ad, you don't pay. You only pay when they watch your ad, at least 15 seconds or all the way through. So you can make a lot of good visual um, recognition. You can get good visibility right there if you do that right beforehand. And you can look for videos and, and target that you want to be in, in certain video areas. Maybe you're talking about dogs. Um, maybe somebody's a dog trainer. So you don't have a channel yourself, but you want a dog trainer to see this. And maybe you want to do a quick video, a skippable ad that gives you some visibility. And what's nice with a skippable ad is it comes with this banner image on the right side and it hangs out there as people are going about because they might have gotten a message or got called away somewhere and they were searching for you and they were about to finish watching your video and now they forgot, they got distracted, they sit back down, they don't know where they're at. This reminds them right here to have that nice companion banner ad and you have that as a part of your skippable ad. So that is a great way for you to also still stay top of mind, but you don't spend. Now you do spend when somebody pay, you know, watches it all the way through. So you wanna budget that accordingly of how much you wanna spend per day or per month, but now you can get a little bit more visibility by utilizing this ad format. Make sense? I understood the made for kids selection. I see I was limiting audience and the restrictions on comments. Yes. So if it's made specifically only for a child who is unsupervised can watch this video, then you would put 
this is for children only, Nancy. But if it's for anybody, a parent, a child, an older child, when I say older child, 13 or above, you know, if it's anybody like that, then I would not put that it's only for children because you will restrict the visibility of your video um, unless it's specifically for children. Like if I was working with, um, you know, if I had a, a music, um, let's say a music tutoring and I worked with uh, kiddos that were uh, seven or eight years old, then that might just be for them. But if the parents are looking at it, then yes, I wanna make sure that it's still available to everybody, okay? And it's really to keep kids safe. It's so that somebody's not just specifically focused on kids who are unsupervised and seeing videos that they don't need to be seeing. Make sense? Okay. So some recaps and resources, some things that you can do. Let's go over that quickly before we finish up because we've got four minutes left. Your to-do list first is to create your channel. If you've already done that, create your videos and then explore additional resources, but take into best practices what I've talked to you today about search engine optimization within your YouTube channel, because again, YouTube is a search engine. So you're gonna use Google Trends, that's g.co slash trends. To do that, you could use your keyword planner here to be able to do that, to be able to see what's trending. And man, if I know that a million people are looking at it, I might put out a video about coffee near me or take out coffee, or it could be a million people are looking coffee shops. So that's how many people are looking over this time period. I've got it April to March, but let's say I wanna look at just the last month. And so um, I wanna look just at March, then I could see that, wow, you know, I really wanna talk about Espresso because Espresso is really doing well, trending higher. And you can also see that in your Google Trends too. So you can utilize both those tools. Remember what I said about, um, oh, let me see here. Actually, I forgot to tell you guys about that, but we'll go back to that in just a moment. You can also go into YouTube and do a search here and find out exactly you know, what people are using, what words are most popular. You can also go into Google search, find out here, or if you do how to train a puppy, and then you look down here at the first organic page of a Google search, all these words right here are currently active trending keywords, right down here in the gray, okay? So you've got all of that at your disposal once you're creating videos and optimizing your channel and your videos. If you don't wanna make a video at all, you can always reach out to a trusted partner. You'll go to this URL here, just say, do you wanna know enough to be able to make a good decision? So this is where you can go here. And then of course you can download Google Primer. It is an app on iOS, so that's Apple or on the Google Play Store and you can download this and there's an entire mini course about how you can work through YouTube and it actually sends you marketing updates and marketing training. So even though all my degrees are in marketing, I use Primer all the time because it keeps me up to date. And then of course, if you think of any other classes that you want, reach out to the Google partner who invited you and they will help you because we're here for teachers, for students, for job seekers, for developers, and of course, for small businesses, which is my passion, okay? so now. Let us launch into Q&A if there's anything else that you want me to cover. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the recording right now. Oh, before I turn off the recording, the one thing I did wanna tell you is there is premieres. If you see that, Google premieres, what a Google premiere is, is it gives you a chance to set up even like a watch party around a video that you're doing, even your own video. So you can do a premiere, it sets up a landing page for you. This is something you could fill again with a lot of good keywords, so a lot of good Google juice and get visibility. And it's a good way for your audience to comment and interact in a premiere too. So take a look at Google premieres and you, or YouTube premieres, and all you have to do is Google that, okay? And that'll come up. All right, now for Q&A. And let me stop the recording.